Okay, hello guys and gals and everybody in between. Um, Utogi Maps asked a really good question on that last steep erosion video. Um, he asked, do you think this could be used to alter the erosion patterns on an entire landscape by changing the min and max elevation to change the slope angle and then resetting it back to the original slope? Or does this technique require the transform to increase the total distance instead of only slope? So this is a really good question. Um, it's, I, I understand it's not immediately clear, so um, I'm going to illustrate in two ways and I'm going to give you a little bit more information that you can kind of chew on for more complex surfaces. And I'll, we'll see how it happens. So in Maya here, um, I've got uh, two, two different versions of what we're dealing with. In, in 3D, we would take a surface and we would essentially rotate it. It would be rotated up into its, its position. But 2D height map is pushing on the vertices or edges uh, and pushing them straight up to create that slope, right? So if I was in Gaia, all I would be doing would be pushing up or down on these points. And what I wanna do is I wanna take those surfaces and maintain their length, right? Their actual length and sort of mimic the idea of rotation. Because if you take a look at this, you can see between these two, this is very stretched, whereas this has all that detail. So by us taking um, the, those points and dragging them outwards, we're uh, making it look like, from 2D point of view, as far as Guy is concerned, the height map information, it sees this, right, rather than this. So if I just change the elevation, I would still be working with this same visual information. You bring it up, bring, bring it down, no real difference, right? So you can see how that works. So th this is what Gaia sees. We, uh, we stretch it out, we get the right. If we just change the elevation, we get the left. There's very little change, very little information. It's just height information and it, it doesn't do much with it. So let's see, practically speaking, um, what, what we're going to end up with. So dealing with just like a regular erosion from the shape, we get this and uh, I took just the wear channel as we've done in the other ones and you look at it and there's plenty of information there. Now let's take this other version where I've gone ahead and I changed the elevation of it, eroded it, and brought it back in. Now, if anything, changing the height actually decreased the amount of detail that we're getting from it. It is a, a it is not as steep of a slope and there's like compensation, I believe, that's put into height map erosion when it tells that it is a really tall surface because there's a big extreme change between the two values you know one pixel next to the other one's white that one's like really dark gray that's a big contrast so therefore it's a really steep slope and it knows to try and do the best that it can with basically just those two pixels there's I mean there's not a lot it can do with just two pixels but it does its best but when you know, it's a really shallow slope between two pixels, a white and a really light gray, then, you know, there's very little change that actually has to happen. It's a nice gentle slope. We'll just use a little bit of erosion. So again, it's that issue of dealing with less information and by actually changing the height, just the height, we're actually going to get a worse result. Now there's other ways that you can try and deal with this. Um, in one of my uh, uh, other previous videos, just before that, I went ahead and I used a repulse. And basically what that is doing is it's sort of squishing in that region. It's doing something similar to like a scale, but it's scaling towards the center, doing an erosion on that, and then um, repulsing the, uh, the wear back out again. So out, I went in 20 and then back out 20 to scale it back out. And what we get here, is um, again a bunch of information that is maybe a little bit more detailed but only in this middle region right and this is where a bunch of stretching is happening here on this one 
and you can see that there's some detail that's compressed but then we end up sacrificing all the detail that we would have gotten at the top so again not ideal and a way of course that you can um, mess with this is that you could try something like taking any one of these examples and uh, like just the original erosion or this repulsed erosion and running something like a displace with a very small scale and uh, um, just kind of breaking it up and it will give you a little bit more detail not a lot it's still going to be streaked but it'll be something right and, and, and it helps hide some stuff so your other option is going really complicated here we have a change between um, let's see uh, one direction another direction and yet another direction so we're taking half of it and we're scaling it you know 200 percent in a given direction and that's uh, that's doubling the amount of information that the erosion has to deal with on each one of those angles we're then going ahead and processing that information um, as a whole but we're going to be masking it out based on angles so I've got my 0, 90, 180, and 270 here with a minimum of 0 and a maximum of 50%. And um, we've got the, uh, the full um, fall off that's default there. It's like 10% fall off. And I'm doing that from each, each one of these angles. And then afterwards, I'm taking those and transforming them back to get those those pieces those chunks back in and what this is doing for me um, is this combination so I take those those wares and I combine them back in in both directions after this uh, I'm going ahead and combining them as max so after they've been cut out from their masks and at 1k I'm ending up with a bunch of the smaller detail uh, unfortunately it has lost enough resolution that it becomes a little bit spotty and there's not a huge amount that you can do with that um, and uh, if I go up to a higher resolution, some of that will go back into proper detail, but at lower resolution, it becomes a problem. So to deal with the problem, I'm just doing a small 0.1, like 10% blur, run an aperture on that uh, by contracting it, and I lose some of the height, but that's, that's not too bad. Um, and then, um, I am applying a really small displace, which is what I mentioned just a little while ago. So rugged, really small scale, that's it. And all it does is, in this particular case, I'm trying to hide uh, repulse at especially 1K. You start to see sort of circular patterns. So I'm trying to hide it a small amount. And by plugging that in, now we're getting some really quite interesting results from that erosion. So now it's based on a higher level of complexity in terms of where it's going and then that and, um, complexity is brought up even just a little bit further to, uh, uh, to the displacement. Now to unify this back in, especially at this level, I'll run a regular erosion but I'll use a small amount of it and that helps tie everything back in just a little bit better so obviously um, this is a lot more work and this is something that would be you know really nice to have sort of an automated system to to deal with and there's a, a variety of little quirks and, and issues it only um, uh, considers that one directional angle when it's doing its initial calculation rather than going around corners so that's like a, a, a downfall another one is if I wanted to cover an entire surface 
we have to recognize for all the angles facing this way, I'm only actually getting half of the canvas. And if I had something else that was, you know, a peak here, a peak here, a peak over here, right? I would be missing half of this information. So in order for this to really work, I would have to double the amount of nodes that I have here, going through, um, scaling it for this one half, you know, um, scaling it 200% and then going negative 50 and then going positive 50 in the X to get both halves and then combine them together. And then I would have to do the other angle same way, uh, negative 50 and positive 50, right? Um, grabbing all those angles. Um, now I could do the the, uh, the transform once and probably pick everything up that way. So I would basically use one transform but two masks. So that'll eliminate a little bit of it, but ultimately it's, it's still quite a lot more work. Um, so yeah, this this process it's it's interesting. And you get some good stuff out of it, um, but it's it's a pain in the bum. So hopefully that answers the question. Um, hopefully you get a little bit more of an idea of you know what you can do. I've done a number of other videos in the past that have. Um, different solutions to make like rocky cliffs and rocky mountains and whatnot with the knowledge that I had at the time. And uh, I suppose even some of this information could work there. Obviously the easiest application is what I did in that last video where you're dealing only with you know sort of one region, one angle and uh, compressing that. But when you have multiple angles, multiple details, uh, it becomes far more complex and that's when you need either an automated system or a template where you kind of set it up once and then you just load in uh, whatever you want to deal with, right? So I can just uh, build whatever I want and then I, when I wanted to do the complex erosion I would have this big thing that would be sitting in a separate file and then I could go, you know, um, uh, import graph and then I would just plug it in and I would be ready to go and it would just uh, poop out whatever result that I wanted. So uh, yeah, I hope this information is useful. And I guess I'll see you in the next video.